what's up guys learning with rich here in this exercise i'm going to add structural columns to a grid and then after that i'm going to show you how to modify them by adjusting their constraint parameters okay so let's do this so the first part is i'm going to add structural columns so you just need to go to the structure tab and then you can now click here structural columns so the shortcut for structural column is cl so let's click this and then after that, I'm going to select um, the type here, which is, so let's say I'm going to use this W250 by 73. So I'm going to click that one. All right. And then after that, here on my options bar, so we have several options. We have rotate after placement. And then you can also specify here uh, the height or the depth. And then you can specify here, let's say, for example, you select your height. So up to what level do you want your column to be placed? So currently we are on first floor. If you select your height and then you select here roof. So what will happen? The column that you will be placing will going to start on uh, first floor up to roof. So you can specify here. So let's say you want your column to be starting on first floor and end on second floor so you just need to select second floor here okay so when you select here depth so what happens is your current level which is first floor it will go down so let's say you create a structural column on first floor so you need to select here a level that is lower than the first floor or your current level okay so you cannot select a level here that is higher than your current level so if you want to do that so you need to change this to height so if you change that to height so make sure that the level that you will be selecting here is higher than your current level because you set that to height okay so make sure uh, you understand the height and depth option here so for this one i'm going to select here uh, height and then I'm going to make sure that this will going to be after the roof level. Okay, so let's do this. So I'm going to place my uh, column on C1, C1, um, C2, C3, and C4. That's it. And then I'll select here modify. Okay, so after you place your column you can actually still rotate that so let's say for example here on my c4 column so i can click this one and then if i want this to be rotated i can press space bar okay just press space bar and then it will now rotate your uh, structural column okay so now the next thing that i'm gonna do here is i'm going to copy all of this by selecting all the columns and then let's copy this copy and then i'm gonna make sure that constraint here is check because i want that to be straight when i copy so multiple option here uncheck because i only want to copy these columns once so i'm going to pick on grid line c and then i'm going to pick here on grid line d to place it on g1 g2 g3 and g4 so i click this one time there you go and then as you can see the columns are is still selected so it's still selected so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pr press space bar to rotate all of these columns at the same time so press space bar there you go so as you can see it rotates again by 90 degrees okay so let's create again another column so i'm going to select my structural column here and then just make sure height roof is selected this time i'm going to use the option rotate after placement so that you will be able to rotate the columns as they are added okay so i'm going to place it here on my just make sure this is check d1 so i'm going to pick on d1 so the moment i pick on d1 here your tool is not yet terminated because as you can see you are still able to rotate it because of the rotate after placement option okay so i'm going to pick here whoa what happened okay so let me just re re repeat again so let me delete this 
the structural column uh, rotate after placement let me just change first the type here i'm gonna use uh 250 by 49 okay so rotate after placement check so pick and then uh, i'm going to oh pick here 90 degrees there you go okay right and then the next thing that i'm gonna do is i'm going to uh, terminate rotate after placement and then let me continue placing my column on uh, e1 let's place it there okay and where else uh, d4 here uh, e4 and uh, f4 okay there you go and I also want to place here on my F1. Okay, and then modify. So let's select this two columns and press the space bar. Okay, to rotate it horizontally. Select all of this and then press the space bar and modify. Okay, so now another options uh, that you can use when you create your column is this one. So structure again, column. You can go to the multiple panel and then you can select here at grids so that you'll be able to place your column on the grid intersection automatically. Okay, so I'm going to select at grid intersection. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control and then I'm going to select uh, DEF using crossing selection like that from right to left. Okay, like this. Click here and then going to the left. DEF and then ho still holding control so I'm going to select 2, 3 and you see what will happen there you go so as you can see automatically the columns was placed to that intersection and these are just the preview so make sure you select finish because if you escape it will disappear again right okay so this is how you do it again so you click at grids or at grid intersection uh, using crossing selection select DEF and then hold control crossing selection from right to left select 2 3 grid there you go so there's now the preview of your column and then just select here finish to place it and then I'll select here modify okay right so again i'm gonna select so let's say i'm gonna select all of this and then i'm going to press the space bar to rotate it and then modify okay now the next thing that i'm gonna do is i'm gonna modify the structural columns so you can also do that in the floor plan on the elevation view or section view or in the 3d view okay so let's do this in the 3d view so i'm going to select the default 3d view so here are all the columns so i'm going to select all the columns like that so let's say i want to change the height so here from the properties you can modify now the base level base offset top level and top offset now let's say i do not want the base level only on the first floor so i want that up to the basement so from the base level i'm going to change first floor to basement and then when I select apply, as you can see, it will stretch up to the basement. Okay. Now I want to add the base offset here. So I'm going to change this from 0 to, let's say, negative. So minus 450. And then I apply again. So it will go down minus 450. That's a base offset. And now for the top level, just make sure this is up to the roof. But the top offset, let me change this to just a little uh, adjustment, minus 150. So it will go down. Apply. There you go. Okay. So that's now our... Uh, adjustment so going back to the first floor another thing that you can do here is you can also change the the distance let's say the distance from uh, D and C 
So I'm gonna click grid line D and there's the temporary dimension. So you can change that. So you can click that, let's say uh, 9150 and then enter. So that's it. Okay, so basically this is now our exercise. Very simple one, but hopefully you learned something from this video. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions you can put it on the comment section below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can so thank you for watching guys have a nice day